All right, it's time for another video from Random Thoughts from a crazed mind. The worst video channel on YouTube. And I'm early morning here in the backyard studio. Lighting's not real good, but nobody's gonna watch, so it doesn't matter. Today, I'm gonna be talking about what is going on in Ukraine. So, uh, the United States has a big, big, big mess on its hands in Ukraine. The United States made a big mess of Ukraine. And so if you want to know what's going on in Ukraine, you have to go back to the 1990s when communism fell in Russia. Now, when that happened, the United States was quite euphoric because we thought that we had conquered the world with our government system. So back in the uh, um, early 1900s, I guess it was, the Russians had a revolution and they overthrew the Tsar. And the United States supported the Tsar because the United States did not like the idea of communism. And the uh, communists took over, um, but the communist system was corrupt. It was not the, really done according to the basic tenets of communism. Um, uh, it was a corrupt uh, system that was put in place. As George Orwell talks about, in his book, Animal Farm. George Orwell was a leftist and he did not like the communists at all because he felt that uh, they had a corrupted revolution. And that's what his book describes, that process by which the revolution became corrupt. But anyway, um, communism did prevail, Russian communism. Um, prevailed and so this became a big threat to United States capitalism and so the United States wanted to get rid of communism but they didn't have any way of doing so and so then Hitler happened a few decades later uh, and the Russians became our allies and so the Russians beat the heck out of the Germans they lost, I don't know, what it was, two million people or something like that in the World War II. It was a huge traumatic event in Russian history. Um, you know, we have a, an importance with World War II, but World War II is much, much bigger for the Russians because they got invaded. Two million people died. Uh, and we patted ourselves on the back a lot about what we how we won World War II, but it was really with the Russians that did it. So, um, we were allies with the Russians during the war, but after the war was over, we were again against the communist system. And there was a lot going on in the United States because communists in the United States were taking over the country. Um, and that um, was coming somewhat from Russia. Um, in their strategy. So the communists were having a lot of success. You know, they were organizing labor unions. They got social security. They got a uh, uh, 40-hour work week. They got overtime. You know, Labor Day. Labor Day is, is a communist holiday. I mean, that's what it is. It's called Labor Day. I mean, that's what communism is all about. Labor. So, um, so we hated communism. So we um, needed somebody to fight after World War II. We didn't have anybody anymore. So it became Russia. And um, over a period of decades, all of the rot that was in the communist government um, eventually came to a head. And uh, the system collapsed. And so what happened then? The United States took over Russia. The United States owned Russia. And this is the key to understanding what is going on in Ukraine. The United States owned Russia. 
Now, what did the United States do in Russia? They implemented a right-wing economic regime that was considered to be the ideal form of government. The kind of government they couldn't put in place in the United States, but they wanted to put it in, in Russia because they had complete control of Russia. They had complete ability to do whatever they wanted. So they put in the most corrupt system that they could possibly put in, and it failed. It failed spectacularly. And Vladimir Putin rose to power, and Vladimir Putin is a nationalist. He was not happy just turning the country over to Wall Street because he was a Russian. And he was a very proud Russian, and he was not a fan of communism. He was a czarist. He believed that, uh, you know, the old, old Russia was the way things ought to be done, and that Russia should be returned back to this uh, kind of dynastic power. <laughs> and so that's basically what he's done. Um, initially, he worked, tried to work with the United States, you know, he brought in, he was uh, used capitalism and everything else, um, but America needed an enemy with Russia for our military spending. So we were not friendly with, with Putin, even though he made overtures to us, you know, you go back and you talk about, you look at what George Bush and Vladimir Putin, they were the best of buddies. George Bush, Vladimir Putin, invited him over to the West, fed him barbecue. One of the funniest uh, things I ever saw was when Vladimir Putin uh, was asked about what he thought about Texas barbecue. And Vladimir Putin went on and on and said it was the most delicious thing he'd ever tasted. And George Bush just laughed <laughs> when he heard that translation. Uh, he thought that was really funny because he knew that Vladimir Putin was uh, full of shit. But uh, anyway, that's how uh, Buddy Buddy, um, George Bush, and Vladimir Putin were at that point because Vladimir Putin wanted to work with the United States. <laughs> but then, as always happens with the United States, uh, they wanted... Putin to do something he didn't want to do, and he didn't do it. And so at that point they said, you know, Putin's not our guy. We got to get rid of this guy. And Putin um, was put off by the fact that the uh, U.S. was trying to run his country more and more. And so he basically severed ties with the United States gradually over these differences that were happening um, between him and Bush. And so once Vladimir Putin was no longer useful to the United States, no, more, no longer a dream of the United States owning uh, Russia because he took it back. And so uh, the United States owned Russia and then they lost Russia to Vladimir Putin. And this was one of the great achievements in American history so far as the people who are big on capitalism and all that sort of stuff. Um, very, very, very proud of this. And, and you know, uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote a book about the, the end of history, the United States system was going to prevail all over the world and all this kind of stuff. And then that, that didn't happen. Uh, the United System failed in Russia and it failed in Ukraine. So Ukraine actually has a worse economy now, significantly worse, significantly worse than when they were in the Soviet Union. Now Russia has a better economy than when they uh, were part of the, you know, when they were the USSR. It's quite a bit better, but Ukraine's is worse. And why is Ukraine's economy worse than Russia's? It's worse because the United States runs Ukraine. The United States has always been run by Ukraine. They got away from Russia. They became an independent country. And they did things for themselves. And the United States took over Ukraine because Ukraine is a very valuable place. Now, Ukraine is 
they haven't really taken it over, but they've been um, they've been run by the United States. But uh, Russia has had basic control of the country because it's a province of Russia. Ukraine is not a country. If you watch my video, why there are only five countries in the world, two of the countries were Russia and the United States, and one of those countries that were not was a country was Ukraine, which is basically all the countries in the world other than those five countries. So Ukraine is a province. The United States wants Ukraine to be a province of the United States, and Russia wants Ukraine back. Uh, and this is all coming to a head because um, without the uh, terrorism to fight, we don't have a good excuse for our military spending. We have gigantic military spending. We got out of Afghanistan, we got out of Iran, but we still want to have that level of military spending. So we need a justification for spending this incredible amount of money on the military, and that reason is Russia. And so what the United States um, has done is to try to get Ukraine to go over to Europe because they know that if uh, Ukraine goes over to Europe, then um, they'll have something to fight with Russia about. And so this has always been kind of a, this has always been an excuse for worse spending. You want to talk about uh, uh, Putin invading Europe and all this kind of stuff. But it was never supposed to happen. Um, but the United States got more and more and more belligerent with Ukraine. They started putting weapons on uh, in Ukraine. And um, that was against the treaty that the United States had with Russia when, the United, when Russia fell apart. Okay, but Russia fell apart, they were weak. The United States said, you know, the hell with the treaty. We're going to do what we want to do. And so uh, they didn't honor the treaty. Well, this made Russia pretty bad. And um, they haven't been happy about it. And, you know, you know, Russia has been invaded quite a few times. And when the United States looks at itself, it says, oh, you we know, we're such good people, you know. But we invade countries all the time. And the United States has wanted to overthrow Russia ever since Putin got in power, and we've been trying to overthrow uh, Russia, and Putin knows this. He knows all about it. The Russians have very, very, very sophisticated surveillance uh, technology, um, and they listen to United States uh, conversations. They know what the plans are. They very embarrassingly uh, released a uh, phone call of Victoria Newlands when she was um, planning the overthrow of the Ukrainian government. So Ukraine had a Russian-friendly government which had been elected by the Ukrainians because Ukrainians are Russians. I mean, if you think about a Ukrainian, you're thinking about a Russian. In your mind, you believe that a Ukrainian is a Russian. If you don't think so, you're lying. Um, if you listen to a Ukrainian talk, a lot of them speak Russian, they're talking in Russian, but even if they don't speak Russian, it sounds like Russian. They're Slavic, okay? The Slavs are the slaves of Europe. I mean, the word slave literally comes from the word Slav, okay? So the Slavic people have always been a, a subordinate group of people in Europe, and that's the way they're regarded, and so, um, there's no respect whatsoever for the people of Ukraine or for Russia. And all the Slavs know this. They know that everybody hates their guts. They don't have any respect for it. So Slavs stick together. And so uh, Russia is always going to own Ukraine. And Ukraine is an extremely important place in the world. That's why the United States wants it so bad. It's got oil, it's got minerals, it's got farmland, and all this stuff can produce a lot of profits for American corporations. And that's why we want it. But more importantly, we want it because we want to overthrow Putin and then we want to own all of Russia because Russia is a resource powerhouse at this time. It's really vital for the future of growth in the United States and all over the world. And we're trying to fight a 
uh, economic war with China, or theoretically we are, we're sending all our jobs over there, so people can't quite figure out what they want to do. They want to, they want to use China for growth, but they want to claim that it's an enemy. Uh, so you can't have it both ways. So Russia and China, they know exactly what the United States wants, and they're against it because it's against their interest. So uh, Russia has given up on the United States, and they're going to go over to China. And so once they decided that they couldn't work with the United States anymore, and the United States put sanctions on Russia, so Russia didn't have anything to lose anymore. So they just needed to take care of themselves, make sure that the United States could not do them any damage militarily. Um, so they took back Ukraine. They invaded Ukraine. This is what this is all about. This is a strategic move for the future. Uh, Russia is securing its future militarily so that the United States cannot overthrow its government in the future, which is what the United States intends to do. So that's what this is all about. So that's why the United States is fighting so hard in Ukraine to try to beat the Russians because they want to have Ukraine because they want to overthrow Russia. Okay? Now, none of this was supposed to happen. I didn't think that Putin was going to do this. Uh, but Putin means business. And um, the Russian military is much better than our military because their weapons, are, it turns out, are a lot better than ours. You know, the Russians don't respect our military anymore. They don't respect our government anymore. Uh, and they aren't worried about fighting the United States because they fought us in Syria when we tried to overthrow Assad and Assad was a friend of Russia so they came in and made sure that didn't happen and they won and so they've dealt with American weapons and they know what America's capable of doing and in this little skirmish we've had with Russia uh, it's been very embarrassing because their airplanes are better than our airplanes and their missiles in particular are better than our missiles and so the Russians contrary to what you're hearing on American television and in European television are not losing the war. They are winning the war. And um, the United States and, and Europe is becoming quite nervous about what's going on. And uh, they're trying, you know, the United States philosophy is the Obama strategy. There's no problem that you can't fix with more bullshit. And they're trying to win the war in Ukraine with bullshit. And it's not working. The Russians are winning the war with missiles, and the United States is trying to fight a war with bullshit. And, you know, when bullshit meets reality, reality always wins, and reality is winning in this war. And we're going to lose Ukraine to the Russians, which is going to be a huge, 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 huge disappointment for the United States, and this is going to be an abject humiliation. I mean, this is a bigger humiliation, really, than Afghanistan, or even Iraq, because, you know, we owned Russia. We wanted to take it back, and this is the end of the dream. I mean, there's no getting Russia back now. They're going over to China. China's not going to give up Russia. Once they've got Russia, they're not giving it back. So for the next hundred years, China and Russia are probably going to be aligned. You can never tell what's going to happen over the very long term, but Russia's going over to China. China's going to become more and more of a dominant force, and now the United States is going to lose the power of its dollar and being able to control other countries. Uh, China's going to gain uh, control of much of the non-European countries. You know, all the countries that aren't white are basically going to be aligned with China outside of Latin America. And um, the Middle East, which we own the Middle East, but um, the Middle East is moving away from the United States because they have enough independence with their oil. You know, we're not going to go in there and overtly own the uh, sorry, the uh, Middle Eastern countries because we've already tried that in Iraq. It didn't work. So we can't really go in there and just own them outright. Um, and China, you know, is not going to allow us to do that anyway. So um, we're going to have to share the oil uh, in the world with China. So we're losing a lot of power there. We're going to lose a lot of power with the dollar. 
And that's what this is all about. It's an attempt to try to keep Russia, try to overtake Russia. And if we could get Russia, we would be a more powerful country than China. Now, China, they don't really care what's going on in Ukraine or Russia. I mean, uh, you know, they're not interested in the United States taking over Russia, but they're not really worried about that because they don't think it can happen. And uh, the Chinese are not really, uh, you know, they're not like the United States. We like to invade countries. We like to overthrow governments. We like to decide what kind of government they have. The Chinese, they don't care about that. They're running China. That's it. They're Chinese. They're, they're nationalists. They're not interested in running um, Haiti, you know, like the United States. They're not interested in running Cuba. They're not interested in running Venezuela like the United States wants to do. They just want to work with these countries. They want to make money off of these countries and have a basically fair deal and they go in there and sell them Chinese, um, Chinese equipment, have them hire Chinese engineering firms, all this kind of stuff. Well, that's all the Chinese are interested in, you know. The United States wants to own the governments, so um, it's a difference in strategy and all these countries are going to go over to China because they know the United States requires that they be uh, subservient to the U.S. rule and that they do what the United States wants to do and they can be a more independent country with China because China is not an aggressive nation. They are just uh, taking care of themselves and that's all they care about. So that's what's going on in Ukraine. Um, we are losing the war in Ukraine. We are going to lose the war in Ukraine. Uh, we are losing both Russia and Ukraine at the same time. And this is a great, great, great humiliation for the United States. Great, great, great disappointment. And that's why we are fighting so hard to kill every last Ukrainian to try to save our ownership of Ukraine. And so that's what's going on in Ukraine. This has been another episode of Random Thoughts from McCray's Mind, the worst video channel on YouTube. Uh, so long, YouTube.